So, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's special webinar, um, Behavioral Finance, how to use it in your trading exclusively for JFT, Pro JFT Brokers. So, my name is Jens Klatt and I'm exclusively presenting this event to you for JFD. Um, it's in fact one of the, uh, yeah, one of the most um, exciting topics in trading in general. So, um, um, uh, um, I wrote a book in German, so some of you, well, I'm not sure, this is an English webinar, so it's a German book, and uh, um, uh, the, the, the topic, behavioral finance here, was a very, very uh, big one in this book. It was on FX trading, and um, as you may know, the, the FX market is a um, primary um, over-the-counter traded market, so we do not have an exchange here, a centralized um, exchange where, where all transactions are um, displayed and there is no real volume. So there is volume by the by far the FX market is the biggest market in the world with an average trading volume of uh, above 5 trillion US dollar. If you combine all other markets like future markets, equity markets and whatever, um, also bond markets, you will never get to the same amount, never get to the same volume on average traded per day as in the FX market. The only problem is you just do not know where it is traded since much of it is over-the-counter trading. And um, so uh, you have to find ways how to um, yeah, how to how to 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 measure certain moves and 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 uh, and understand um, um, the the positioning of of retail trades behind this. And you can you can use uh, numbers here from brokers, for example, retail brokers. You can combine them if you want. You can use uh, them them um, um, uh, from the brokers um, um, only. And uh, then if you interpret them based on a behavioral finance uh, perspective or based on a behavioral uh, based on the behavior, natural behavior of retail traders, you can find very interesting trading spots and uh, um, identify advantages in your trading. But also something I'm uh, making a topic in my educational pieces, for example, uh, behavioral finance and, and using the retail sentiment here and the behavior of retail traders, by the way. Through, oh, one, one second. That was a little fast. So here, the first of all, the risk disclaimer, um, and um, yeah. So it's it's a very spectacular topic, and some uh, which is really interesting. And what I just hope when you listen to what I have to say here is that um, you get some idea of uh, how your brain plays with you, let's say, and and sometimes it's uh, playing games with you, and based on those games, you tend to behave in a very uh, irrational way um, and the behaving in such an irrational way will cost you in the long run a lot of money and uh, so the idea behind this is get a get a small idea it's just just a small small piece we can we can cover today here since this topic is is, is really huge um, but you can uh, I, I just hope you can grasp grasp some concepts here and then use this for your trading uh, in the future or understand why you do what you're doing a little better um, sometimes you may just wonder hey what what's going on with me why can't I let my winners run why cut I winners short while let losers run and all this and uh, behavioral finance um, uh, gives some some very uh, interesting um, thoughts here on this topic and then uh, in fact some uh, some easy explanations why it is the way it is so First of all, the first slide. So what is behavioral finance about? So exciting question already introduced several seconds ago. Why do retail, tra retail traders do what they do? Why do they hold too long on losing positions and cutting winners short? Especially since there are many educational pieces out there emphasizing let winners run and cut losers short. So obviously, um, I just mentioned that I wrote a book. I mentioned this myself in the book, but I also know since I have plenty of trading literature here um, uh, in, in my office too, so well, what I what I know is that nearly every book, even if it's just uh, it's if if it's just a mediocre book on trading, um, it it definitely makes this a topic. And uh, if if a bad book makes letting winners run and cutting losers short a topic, it turns into a mediocre book. Let's say. Um, and uh, so this is definitely true and if you're a professional trader, if you're a long-term trader, well this is definitely something you will, you have to understand if you really want to become successful, profitable in your trading. The only question is, well we all know this even though we also know how difficult it is to let winners run for example. And um, so 
What we definitely know here, um, before we, we, we before we get a um, before we get a, a little more um, uh, um, details here on this topic, psychology and trading plays a crucial role. Definitely. So um, everyone will agree that emotions in trading are very very important. Anger, frustration, fear. That's probably the main emotion. Um, I, uh, um, 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 I I I came about over the years and I was confronted with, um, not just in my own trading, but also uh, um, um, when, it, when it came to, 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 to customers, to clients here. Um, confidence, ego, also something. That's, by the way, it's, it's gray. So the, uh, um, it's, it's, uh, there's always a thin line between confidence, ego, anger, frustration. So both of them somehow play together with, with each other. Well, fear also. So like I have a big ego, okay? So probably I had a winning streak of six, seven winners a row. I feel great. I think I'm the best trader in the world and I, I will never lose again. So, uh, and now the thing is, next trade is the eighth one and then you start to get fearful. Why? Well, <laughs> still there's a chance that you will lose now and uh, that your ego gets hit by that. Now the trade uh, doesn't move your direction and you get frustrated. Why? Well, you just lost and, and you thought you were the biggest trader in the world, the best traders. You had seven trades in a row, you made money on them. Um, probably just small amounts of money nevertheless it's what the hit rate uh, what 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 counts especially for retail traders for beginners thinking hey if I'm, I'm, I'm right often enough well there's no problem in being profitable in the long run well you get frustrated then you start to over trade probably you start to increase the trade frequency since you just say hey I have to make back those losses and I have to uh, get such a winning streak again five six seven eight winners in a row um, and this is then something we call motivation or actionism. So you, you start you, you start with, with action. I have to, to, to do something now. Why do you have to do something? Very easy, since you learned it in school. So if you were bad at the topic, um, like maths or something, well, what did you do? You came home, you just sat at your desk, and then you had to learn. Some some did this, some didn't. Some just says, okay, probably I'm not uh, I'm talented enough for this. Some uh, just had never a problem in uh, getting good grades here, uh, with, with or didn't need to do uh, that much for school. They had talent, uh, but I don't know. But the thing is, you can see that those uh, um, these these are thin lines. It's uh, it's 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 gray. It's getting gray, and and those um, um, emotions start to interact with each other. And uh, nevertheless, based on my personal experience, all in all, fear is one of the main topics, respectively, emotions in trading. So fear is always a big, big topic, um, which is completely fine. So um, and, and, and trading is a very abstract topic. So it's, it's not unusual that we find ourselves in um, very stressful situations in trading since um, the... Um, um, the fact that trading is so abstract here is something um, when uh, you just do not know how to deal uh, with, with, with a certain topic. And what you usually do is, well, you look at what happened in the past and um, how did I cope with the situation then in the past. The only problem is, and this is the thing, trading is abstract, so it's very difficult to find spots in your in your past when you behaved in a certain way and you could get... Uh, out of this stressful situation. That's usually the point when uh, the stress starts to, to, to rise, the stress level rises, and um, that's uh, the moment when you feel like completely devastated. Um, that's something, well, usually you will see that there's a big difference feeling adrenaline in your, in your trading, so uh, feeling kind of fear, but it's also somehow it, it pushes you in the right direction. You just feel, well, there's something going on. So it's money on the line and um, it's adrenaline. But if the stress level is, it arises higher and higher and higher, then uh, the, the human body tends to, um, uh, to, 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 to provide you with something called cortisol. And cortisol is resulting then in a yeah, kind of devastating uh, mode and, and you just feel horrible, if, if, especially if, if um, a losses mount and, and, and you, you, you do not work with a stop and you just feel like, okay, I want to go to bed. I feel so, so tired today. And then the next morning, 
morning you awake, you, you couldn't sleep well, and next morning you awake and then it starts all over again and you just do not know what to do. You're, yeah, you're, you're ca caught in a, in a position which is moving against you. You do not know how to, how to uh, get out of the position since you do not know how to, to deal with that. And uh, that's um, something um, where fear sp plays a very, very crucial and very important role. And um, that's, that's, by the way, the main reason why fear is uh, such a big topic in trading in general. And, and that's also, also always something I uh, make a topic um, for my students um, who, who say, hey, I want you to be my mentor. Um, then I make sure that they understand that fear is something completely normal. Nevertheless, they have to uh, find ways how to... Yeah, they, they, no, they have to they have to create situations and they have to have a plan right from the beginning of a trade so that they never come to such a state of mind where they feel completely devastated. And that's one of the main reasons why having a trading plan is crucial if you want to become successful, profitable in your trading. It's also something, it's crucial if you uh, want to stay in a, um, a balanced state of mind, let's say. So, and now, based on what, um, based on that, fear especially, or all those emotions in trading, we get uh, to see so-called cognitive biases. So systematically and flawed tendencies when it comes to percipients, remembering, thinking, and judging. And this uh, impacts your trading in a, in a very negative way. So just let me give, a, give you a short example here on um, what I do uh, m m mean with, with, for example, remembering. So just imagine um, the situation around Donald Trump and uh, the election last year in November. So now let's go one year back from now. So it's July, the 13th of July, 2016. Uh, the election in the US is around, how long, four months? Yeah, it's four months from now. And um, now I ask you, how possible, oh, oh, no, no, tell me the probability, or what do you think, what do you think um, how likely it is that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. So now you will probably say, hey, something like 40% or something. Um, and then you write it down. You write down 40%. Just, just let, let us use this number here. Uh, so it's not a coin flip, but you probably think, hey, there's some probability, but nevertheless, I think Clinton will nevertheless at the end make it, even though I think it would be some kind of interesting to see what happens to the world if someone like Donald, Trump's, uh, Donald Trump um, uh, is the uh, um, uh, next US president. Now the election comes and Trump gets elected as it happened. And now I ask you again, hey, what did you think, well, what do you think, um, what did you think was the likelihood of Trump getting elected in July, four months from now, uh, two months earlier, uh, four months, I'm sorry. And um, you might say, well, I, I, all the time I knew it. I just knew it that he'll be elected. And then you would say something like, yeah, it's 70, 78%, something like that. So I'm very sure that, that he is the next US president. Well, and you're wrong since you just wrote down it was 40%. And the thing is that this is something, it's a so-called hindsight bias. You, you just remember wrong. Um, um, and 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 you would just like it, this is this happens all the time. It's also in trading. You might re, you might recall this now several times. How many times did you did you listen to yourself? You sat in front of your screen. You just said, "I knew it. I knew that EURUSD had to go up, or I knew that DAX had to go down." Um, that's always the same. But the thing is, you are not one hundred percent sure that this would happen, uh, and that's the reason why you didn't bet. You know, it's, it's, I mean, and this is something which in trading is, uh, is crucial. So if you're, if you're uh, having a clear signal or if you're 100% sure that something will happen, well, 100% sure means you can't be wrong. From pure mathematical standpoint, what does this mean? Well, very easy. That means you have to bet, <laughs> okay? You have to bet nearly all you have, but you won't since you're not 100% sure. And if it really happens then, well, you will definitely remember wrong how likely you uh, thought this or that would happen. Um, and this is something which we call cognitive biases here. And um, so the thing is that we could definitely end this here right now. And you might then say, well, you know what? 
great. <laughs> That's the theory behind this. But I want to make sure that you really grasp this concept and that you really understand that what we're talking about here is a real, par real problem. And it's the, it's, the, uh, it's, the, it's the number one reason why retail traders lose money in their trading. So what we have here, oh, by the way, that's bad. Oh. Still, I, I could I could show you I could show you the English uh, chart here. I didn't change it. I'm sorry. The next time we'll have this this webinar here, I'll give you the German one, even though it's very uh, very very easy. So the blue um, uh, columns here, these are the average winners, while the red ones are the average losers. And here's just average winner to average loser, and uh, this in different asset classes, as you can see here: Euro, USD, Gold, German, Thirty, so DAX, Dollar, Yen, and so on. And um, what you can see is that the average winner is always smaller, nearly half of the average loser. And by the way, this is not just um, one day, but it's uh, nearly one year of data, and we're talking about over 9 million trades. So really, a huge number of trades. And overall, we can see that the, the tendency of the retail trader is to cut winners short, and let losers run. And by the way, I had the same graphic here in my book, but for another time frame. There it was the fourth quarter, from the fourth quarter of 2009 till the end of the th um, uh, third quarter 2010. So another time frame, some different assets here, uh, but all in all, you got the same tendency. Cutting winners short, letting losers run, and uh, the, uh, the ratio nearly was one to two. So, um, and that is something Will, uh, which is obviously it is a real problem. So, and some uh, some of my students also in my in my um, 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 online courses and in, in private coachings, for example, some of them uh, when I when I introduce to them this concept here, they just tell me, hey, no, I'm I'm I don't have this problem. It's a true story. I had one guy, highly successful, really very very successful entrepreneur, made a lot of money. And then just said, hey, I want to yeah, relax a little. So um, it was over 50 and I said, well, you know, no, I, I just want to manage my money. Everything's fine. Trade a little. But the only thing is I need a coach. I, I need a mentor here. Uh, and I want you to be my mentor. And uh, please tell me all this. And then I, I told him uh, the, the concept, which I already introduced to you in several other webinars here, the concept of the three columns of profitable trading. And um, I told him, well, this is what you, what you should always be aware of. Uh, you, what you definitely need at the end is you have to have an advantage trading strategy, a clear plan, a business plan, which you know is profitable, which works, even though you probably might face a series of losses. There might be five, six losers in a row. doesn't matter. Um, at the end of the year, you're ahead, and you made more money, or you, your, your account grew to a higher amount of money than you started with. So you do not have a guarantee in the markets, but the, the likelihood is, is, is high, is really, really high for that. So, and then, um, then we came to this topic here, trading psychology, behavioral finance, and I told him, hey, by the way, uh, you will face this in your trading too, even though you, have, you might have an advantage trading strategy, a good business plan and everything, um, you, will, you will face this. You, you won't get rid of this natural human tendency. It's, it's, it's in you. Every human being has this. And every trader has a big problem since he has to somehow cope with that. It's, it's not you can't get rid of it, this, this so-called loss aversion, but you have to really cope with that and, and find ways of, 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 of deal with those emotions and cognitive biases. He just looked at me and said, no. And I told him, I'm, I'm sorry. Or I asked him, I'm, I'm sorry, and he said, no, I don't have this. I don't have loss aversion. Uh, I told him, yes, you have it. It's, it's natural. It's human. No, why should I? Even though I have it probably, I, I might have it now, but if I have an advantage strange thing, I just go with it. And I told him, no. <laughs> and and, and I, I can tell you this since I have plenty of experience, not just with my own trading, where I know I'm profitable, I'm making money, um, and, and I'm managing clients' money, for example, so my clients also know that I make money for them. Uh, um, and, 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 and I know even though I, I might have a huge winning trade running, so right now I'm flat, but, but there was plenty of occasions, plenty of webinars where I had a trade on, and, and I should just told you, hey, I'm a hat here in this trade, like, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000 euros. Uh, worked out really well, um, and then the market moves against you. Um, some pips, and you probably just lost. The P&L just dropped by 500 euros. And 
it felt horrible. You were just like, hey, this doesn't, that, that doesn't feel great. Um, even though you know well, it's just 500 euros and you're still ahead four and a half. Probably you were ahead 5,000, so you're still ahead four and a half. The initial risk was something like 2,000 euros, so the payoff of the trade is still bigger than two. It's still great. Um, nevertheless, you, you feel pain. And I told him, hey, you feel that? No. He just said no. It's, it's, and so the thing is, you, you have to, to, to deal with it. If you're a coach and if you're, if you're mentoring someone, coaching someone, well, you just have to deal with that. And you just say, okay, well, try yourself. Took a little but after a year, he called me and just said, hey, I just felt lost aversion. <laughs> and he was just like, I feel devastated. I, this was just like, I feel, it felt so horrible. Even though it was a break, even trade at the end, I just felt like I was already, I had 2,000 euros here, just lost 2,000. I felt like a, a complete loss. Yeah, I know, I said. That's, uh, if you look at this chart, you know how big the loss felt. If you're coming down from 2,000 euros down to, uh, down to break even, getting stopped down break even, even though you don't make a loss after commission everything, um, it felt like a loss. It felt like you just lost 4,000 euros since the, the ratio is 1 to 2. That's, by the way, something you will find out uh, um, um, also in science here. So there are plenty of guys who analyze this topic, especially Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky. Uh, um, uh, Daniel Kahneman, by the way, wrote the book Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. And um, I highly recommend this book. I highly recommend it. And uh, they just found out that's nearly 2. The, the factor here is nearly 2. So it felt like a loss. And in fact, it's, 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 it's exactly the same the thing. So if you have a break-even trade, it feels like, like you just lost uh, the same amount. The market just moved against you here. Um, and uh, this is something, yeah, you have to cope with. It's, it's nothing you can get rid of, but you have to cope with that. Another thing is, yeah, you might say, okay, great. Now I see it's a real problem. <laughs> now we, I just told you, okay, um, uh, be aware that there's a problem, uh, the theory behind this, and now I just showed you a chart here, and it's a real problem. But still, um, I don't think that you grasp the concept so far. And now the thing is, we do the following. We play two games here. So... Two games, they independently from each other. Game one, game two. Okay, first game, choose option A, option B. One option, okay? You get right here, in the first game, you get 900 euros from me. Or the second cho chance, uh, choice is you have a 90% chance of getting 1,000, but a 10% chance of getting nothing at all. Choose one. So, which one would you want? Uh, which one would you choose, option A or option B? Just just uh, write it down or probably write it in the chat box. That's that's probably something. I'll, I'll just wait a little then. Um, and uh, now I'll give the second game right after that. Um, same game, now about losing. Choose between these two options. Option A, you lose right here 900 euros uh, and you have to give it to me. Or option B, you have a 90% chance of losing 1,000 euros, but a 10% chance of losing nothing at all. And also here, the question, which option do you choose? So um, I just wait, let's, let's say 10 seconds or something. Um, you can, you can uh, write it down and then post it in the, in the chat box. I have already some, some here. Interesting, <laughs> very interesting. Um, and I can tell you uh, one, one um, anecdote here. So I'm, I'm doing this for quite a while. So not just trading, but also giving presentations, also holding this, this presentation here, playing this game with, uh, with the audience. And I can tell you that I, I, I held this, this presentation here in front of, um, I think, the highest number of attendees was something like 200, 250, 50, 200, 250 guys. It was a conference, um, on, on trading trading conference for a big broker. And we did this at, on several occasions. So um, I'd say it's something like I played this game at least 10 times with the audience. And um, I always got the same result as I got here. It's the same result. It's awesome. <laughs> it's just great. Um, so usually you have a tendency in game one uh, that nearly 60 to 70%, it's more like 70% of the people choose option A. For game two, um, they usually tend to uh, choose option B 90% of the time. So here right now it's 60-40, 65-65. Yeah, 65, 65, 35, and uh, game two, yeah, that's, that's really, um, that's 100% B, <laughs> okay, it's 100% B, but, but usually it's, um, there, there are some, some, uh, some guys out there who just say, hey, yeah, I, I probably go for, for one. Um, and now the thing is, look very carefully what you get, just got to see here. So game one and game two, I'm not playing any games with you in terms of uh, mathematical, um, um, uh, 
uh, any mathematical games here. The expected value in game one and the expected value in game two, they are both 900 euros. Okay, so I'm not playing any games here. It's purely psychological um, what we're playing here. And um, so the thing is, did you just see what happened? Case of winning, case of losing. Um, I'll tell you this after after the next example. So since that was at Munich here in Germany, it was a presentation on this topic, and someone came to me and said, "Great topic, uh, great presentation. I really love that. I really appreciate that you're here, and so on." And then he said, "Well, but the thing is, I don't think that the people, the audience, really got this this game and sees the connection to trading, and they probably you should um, work out something which is more trading related." And um, I thought this this would be a great idea since uh, I, I just found out and afterwards reading some feedbacks um, and, and also getting some further feedbacks and personal conversations that people really had problems to get to grasp this concept here behind this game. And so what I did was um, I created a trading related example, but here also that's bad. It's just bad. One second. I, I just I just um, see whether I can change this. Um, I should have, I should have, uh, I, sh I just should have used the screenshot here, so one sec, here, there we go. Um, I just have to snipe this out here, but it's way better. So here, you see it's the same, same, same thing, same chart. Uh, but now it's with, with, with English subtitles. It makes more sense here. So here, the, the, the purple uh, circle, entry point for long position, phase of gaining profits here, phase of realizing losses, so meaning the position which went uh, initially for you, now it's moving against you. Uh, then the phase of profit taking, you're just taking the profit since you just say, hey, I can't stand the pain anymore. It's at least let's take a small gain, a win here. Um, yeah, time for insecurity is coming to its end if you want. Uh, you have here the small profit and if you now see the initial risk was way bigger since you placed your stop here. So what you just did, you, you just traded the breakout. Simple Dow theory if you want. Uh, higher highs, higher lows, you just trade the break to higher highs, have the initial stop here. That was the initial risk and um, now what you, what, you, what you see here is that compared to this the, the, the gain you just realized is small. And this is the thing. So how many times do you feel like, okay, it was great. I just traded the breakout and everything's cool, moving, moving my direction, great. Um, and then the market is coming against you and you just, you just feel horrible. It's just like you're still ahead, but this is exactly what I just told you. Um, and the position when I'm ahead 5,000 and, and the market's moving 500 euros against me, it just feels horrible. It just feels horrible. And the more the market moves against you, the, the, the worse the feeling about the position itself, even though you're still ahead and you're still making money if you, if you close the position here. And then you just grab the, the small win here, even though the market might then say, okay, now I'm going higher from here. Since why does this happen? Well, this is a tendency of the market, higher highs, higher lows. It has to come back to then have a sequence of higher highs and here higher lows. That's a natural tendency of the market. And you can't avoid this. It's just something you have to, yeah, to somehow deal with if, if, you're, if you're a trend follower, for example. And um, so, okay. Um, and so now let's, let's have a look at this and what's happening here. So obviously, you, you don't feel that joyful when the market's moving your direction, but it feels so horrible and so much pain when the market is moving against you. So now, let's have a look here at this game again. So when you're winning, you get right here 900 euros. You just grab the 900 euros. It's safe. It's a safe thing. You're not gambling for another uh, 100 euros getting 1,000 and having a 10% chance of getting nothing at all. You just don't do this. Um, it's a natural tendency. You just say, okay, I grabbed 900 euros. So on average, by the way, it makes, from a mathematical standpoint, it doesn't make a difference. But in this case, the long run, uh, this is where, uh, the, the, let's call it the gambling component comes into play. And this is where, where really it's getting interesting since uh, those market participants are um, some, 
might some might say, well, I go for the break. I I, I just hope that the market will break out here. Some of them, uh, some of these trades um, won't make it, and and then we'll just get a little little uh, or a smaller gain here on the on the trade, a smaller profit. Even though there are times when the breakout happens, and if it happens and the market really moves in your direction, this is the home run you're hitting, which is probably making your profitable trading approach even more profitable, and which is which is giving you with one trade the performance of one year. And those who can stand this pain, uh, and and who grasp this concept of expected value, those are definitely traders um, who will who will have a good chance to make it in the long run. While on the other hand, those choosing option B here have a big problem since you just say, hey, what's 100 euros more? Nothing. I mean, well, I'm losing 900, 100% sure. So here in this case, I have a 10% chance of not losing anything at all. But now the thing is, if you do this often enough, you know, you know that rather sooner or later, you will probably face the mother of all losses. Since this is the usual concept where you just say, hey, I, I just take out the stop, even though I might lose another 50 points, doesn't matter. Okay, matters in terms of the margin and potential margin call if the point value is high enough. But all in all, um, this is what retail traders tend to do. They just let losers run. They just don't like to 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 be wrong. They, they just they hate losing, which is natural, by the way. This is completely natural, even though trading is about, and once again, cutting losers short. And take the loss the moment you see it, and you just think, hey, well, you know what? I just take out the position here. Let me let me give you an example on this. So um, uh, some of you might have followed my, my morning meeting, and they you might know that I was short EuroGBP. I was short EuroGBP against those, uh, those highs here, and the proposition didn't work out that well for me. So obviously it moved against me and pushed higher and higher and higher. My initial stop, or not the initial stop, but the stop um, of the position was 88.80, so here. And um, I was stopped out on this trade. Did I like this? Not one bit. Do I like it now to see what happens here? No, I don't. And I just don't. Ho I just hope that the market will turn around and probably make it to 90, but not collapse from here. But I took the loss since I know, well, just imagine this is what happens here. Just imagine this, you, you're, you're having a stop here, somewhere there, you're getting stopped out. Okay, you take a small loss, it's not cool. Um, by the way, I was short from here too, so I made some profit on this trade, I was stopped out here in this in this region. Um, was a little, well, in the after, afterwards I say, well, trade management could have been better, bigger gain, but all in all, just imagine I would have taken out the stop here. I would have lost not just all my gains I made so far and and realized here, but I would have lost them all plus made some uh, lost some money on the trade too if I stayed with my stop here at this level and got stopped out at around 88. So and this is exactly the thing. So the time will come when the market will stop you out and then turns around and you might say, well, why? did I got stopped out here, now the market is moving my direction. But there are also times, and these are the times which will cost you so much money, uh, when you when you just, just can't take the loss here, but you say, hey, I'm gambling for another 50 pips or something. And this is exactly what we're, what we're talking about here in this, in this moment. So when it comes to losing, there's no other choice than just cutting the loser short and just take the loss right here even though it might just be 100 euros, to this 10 times, we're talking about 1,000 euros, okay? And 10,000, if you're trading, let's say a 10,000 euro account, well, it's 10% of your trading equity. This is 1%, 100 euros more, it's just 1%, but do this 10 times, it's 10%. And now just imagine, I mean, what would you do if you if you had a bank account getting 10% per year um, uh, in, in interest here? Well, I, I think we don't need to, to talk about this. The other thing in terms of winning, um, so you can definitely grab the money. It doesn't make a difference from a mathematical standpoint. But let's have a look here. This is 1% more in your trading portfolio at the end. 
So if you're trading, let's say, 10,000 euro account, making 100 euros more. If you do this 10 times, it's 10% more performance at the end of the year. And this makes the difference between a profitable and unprofitable uh, trader here. And this is exactly the thing. The reason why you do this, why you behave the way you do, is because of loss aversion. And that is something you can, you know from your trading, when the market moves in your direction, you feel probably a little joyful, but if the market moves against you, it feels horrible. And the moment you're getting stopped up break even, as already said, well, you just felt, uh, it just feels like as if you just lost on this trade, even though you just made no money, but you also do not lose any money if you look at your trading journal here. So now let's have a look here at this thing. So four cases. These are uh, based on, on Kahneman's best thing book, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, which I already highly recommend it and I still highly recommend it. And it's probably one of the best trading books out there, even though it has nothing to do with trading at the first glance. Second, it has everything to do with trading. And um, so there are, there are four cases in which I definitely would say definitely avoid one of them. And this is the case of losing with a small probability here. Um, so a risky bet if you want. Um, but um, let's start here first. You have a 90, 95% chance of, uh, of winning 10,000 euros. Um, and now the question is, do you go for a break of this level and then probably go for another 10,000? So you, you're already well ahead on a trade, but even though you, you might see a very significant uh, region here. Now what you could do is go aggressive with your stop behind the market here, trail it aggressively um, after the market, and then just say, hey, Probably I'm risking, let's say, 1,000 euros from those 10. I'm already safe here. But go for another 10,000. You know, it's a payoff of 10-1, potential payoff of 10-1. So this is exactly what I was talking about, betting on a breakout here. If it happens, well, you make some significant money. I mean, the market condition have to be right and everything. But all in all, this is what trading is about. Let winning trades run and try to grow them even bigger. Um, and exactly do this in the moments when it feels the most uncomfortable for you and you have to to say okay I'm I'm just yeah probably risking 1,000 of those 10 I'm already ahead so that's the case of winning um, most of retail traders don't do this and this is exactly where the first difference here in trading uh, comes into play case of losing 5% chance of losing uh, 10 grand so it's the other way around here uh, and now the thing is, you just feel the loss, even though it's unlikely. You know, you just don't go for this. Even though, I mean, I have to say, this is something where another cognitive bias could come into play, since 10,000, you're risking 10,000 euros means you're, uh, if, you, if it's 1% of your trading equity, you're trading a 1 million euro account. So you see, uh, which is uh, not the, it's not very likely that people who listen to me right now here will say, hey, I'm just trading 1 million euro account. Um, meaning for most of the people listening to this right now, they would say, hey, I'm, if I'm losing 10,000 euros, uh, that's, that's quite a bunch of money for me. So 5% um, chance of losing. So this, this um, somehow contradicts the example a lot. But I think you, you, you get the concept. If it's, if it's an unlikely event, you nevertheless probably just say, hey, you know what, I... I, I just I just don't take the risk. I just don't take the risk here. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, sometimes this is this is not the worst option, but you're definitely losing some of the potential here from from this one. So in fact, it's it's uh, as already said, if you're trading too big, then it's very likely to game one an option A here where you just grab the 900 euros. From a mathematical standpoint, in this case, it didn't make enough, um, 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 a big difference. But now imagine we're not just talking about um, 900 here, but you're probably grabbing 900 while well, they have a chance of winning 5,000. You see? And this is, this is then getting very interesting in perspective from an expected value perspective. So uh, that's also something which, which you have to fight to cope with in your trading. So then the case of winning, which is something I'm fine with it's, it's personal. It's just personal. I, I just love. Sometimes I just love to gamble, even though I know it does make sense. Play some lotto or something like this. Well, you just do it. You know it's negative expected value, uh, but the thing is, the risk, um, uh, um, the 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 the. the um, the risk profile here, risk reward profile, is so attractive. You just go for it. I mean, I, I'm let's say betting 10 euros and I have a chance of winning 100 million. 
not that bad, I think. So even though it's very unlikely, and uh, I don't know, I have to live um, from a statistical standpoint, like one trillion years or something to, to, to be a winner here, even though I have to say, well, it's fine. Let's, let's just hope that this is the one billionth time here. Um, so why not? Um, you have a 5% chance of winning 10 grand, and this is something, well, some, especially men, tend to go for this since men are always men, or men will always be little kids, so we just like to gamble a little. And so I'm somehow fine with that, even though you have to be really careful. Don't do this very often, um, since also here expected value is playing a, certain, a very important role also in terms of your trading, and, uh, um, and it could cost you some significant portions and amounts of your, of your trading uh, performance probably you may be ahead in the year. And the last thing is to get rid of this one. Get, just get rid of, of, of this one. If you get rid of this one and you're, you're sticking to those three here, you will be fine. The thing is, you have a 95% chance of losing 10 grand and you just say, well, I keep it on. I probably even average the loser here. Um, and take out the stop and someday it will probably might return and, and so on. Um, it's the sunk cost fallacy principle here. And you're just throwing good money after bad and this is what most traders do. They just say, hey, I've lost so much money. Well, okay, what's another, let's say in this case, 5,000 or something. And uh, this is the thing. Um, if you can, can, can get rid of this in your trading, you'll be, you'll be already fine, I think. You have a very good chance of at least breaking even with your trading. Most traders, retail traders, especially beginners, don't do this. They average into losers and they say, hey, great. Nine out of ten times, I've, I've averaged into a loser, market turned around, and I turned a small profit. And then the tenth time, the market doesn't turn around, and you just face the already introduced mother of all losses. And this is the moment when you blow your, your trading account, and, and, and you just, yeah, you're paralyzed. This is the moment when you then just do not know what to do anymore. Code is all taking over and all this, what I already introduced at the beginning. So get rid of this, and you will already do quite fine. Uh, that's that's definitely something you should definitely take out this um, of this this presentation here. And now the question is, how do you uh, profit with this knowledge in your trading? Since this is what what this uh, topic here, this webinar should be about. And um, so the thing is, I already it's not just losing, but it's also what you do in terms of winning. And uh, that's that's something where I then say um, where where I just want to. Um, um, emphasize that that you have to to really understand that cognitive biases are not just all always and all the time about losing, even though it's it's a bigger topic, personal experience based, if I want to say that. But uh, nevertheless, winning streaks are also a big topic. Once again, self confidence, ego, as already already introduced. So you have a winning streak, you gain self confidence and feel invulnerable. That's just like you feel like I'm king of the world and no one can beat me and I will uh, be the next trading trillionaire or something like this. And um, so what you should do then if you feel, if you, if you come to this point where you, you have such a big ego and self-confidence building, is like you have to induce rational thinking here. So find actively reasons why the next trade could fail. It's the so-called pre-mortem analysis. That's also something which is um, in trading crucial and, and very important in general since uh, if you start to really find actively reasons why the next trade could be a loser you will never ever trade again without a stop since you just know okay I'm long here's the advantage that's why I'm long when is my idea not given anymore so you have to place a stop at a point where the advantage is not long anymore and you shouldn't be long anymore and uh, if, you, if you understand this, you're also doing already fine. So this, this concept of pre-mortem analysis is, is a really good one. And um, yeah, as already said here, if, I bet if you do this accurately, you'll never trade without a stop anymore and you won't fear, fear losers anymore since you just know something can go wrong. If it goes wrong, well, you might lose. That's, that's all. That's, uh, that's the whole secret. If you grasp this concept, uh, the concept of expected value, well, you understand that trading based on cognitive biases will result in bad results in the long term and increasing your chances of going broke. Of going broke. So what's the expected value? First of all, let's just 
Ah, I'm sorry. I just I just googled here for expected value while I was looking for the editor. <laughs> okay, so expected value uh, equals to um, average winner multiplied with the hit rate, and then you subtract the average loser with the loss rate. So that's it. Okay, if you grasp this concept, you just know, you obviously see um, average winner, average loser, something you can influence as an average loser thanks to working with, uh, th thanks to working with a stop here, or the hit rate is something, well, you just really can't influence. I mean, if you're trading with an advantage, usually the hit rate shouldn't be 0 or 10%, but usually somewhere around 40% latest, uh, or at least, and with some experience in the market, you can also increase the hit rate. But um, usually, this is something you can't influence since you just do not know whether the market will go up or down. But what you can influence is the average winner and average loser. So here you can already see that average winner, if you um, divide this by the average loser, you get a, um, something, number, which is called payoff ratio. And the payoff ratio, the higher it gets, the um, lesser the probability that you uh, go broke with your trading, that you reach the point of uh, risk of ruin, so-called. And um, if you really grasp this concept, if you grasp this formula, you can already understand and all, yet right now understand why letting winners run and cutting losers short plays such an, a crucial role in trading. You make winners big, you let them run, average winner increases. There's this number growing then if the hit rate stays uh, stabilized here at a certain level. You subtract average loser multiply it with loss rate, average loser, you cut losers short. So the average loser stays small. If you do this, obviously the overall expected value in your trading should go up. You become more profitable in your trading. Simple mathematics. And if you really understand this formula, you definitely understand what's meant with letting winners run, cutting losers short. And um, why so many traders obviously fail in their trading based on cognitive biases. So this is where the circle cl uh, closes uh, if you want. So the solution, formulate a trading plan, clear idea of what you plan to trade, test it. And if it works and the approach is robust, um, well, go for it. So meaning, in short, having a positive expected value and a risk of a ruin of zero. This is what a, a robust approach is and what a trading strategy is about. That sounds very, very easy, it's not. So you have to really formulate a business plan. And believe me, there are many people out there who want to formulate a profitable business plan and become profitable in their trading and make tons of money. So you're trading with the best, smartest guys in the world. And all of them want your best, your money. And uh, the same thing goes for you. Meaning, uh, well, you obviously have to, 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 to formulate a business plan. That's where the main work comes into play, then test it and so on. And um, also, stop fighting, writing your strategy and your trades, um, uh, writing down, and that's, that's one word, using, writing down your strategy and your trades. The thing is, most people do this um, since they want to avoid to probably see that what they're doing doesn't work. And uh, that's um, something we also call, it's a cognitive bias, it's a kind of self-defense here, if you want. And instead make it something positive. So if you make a mistake, if you're losing money, well, you get a chance of getting better. It sounds yeah, not esoteric, but but um, it, it, it sounds so easy, but it, that is exactly what it is. So um, I'm not sure how many people of you listening here to this um, have a trading journal, and not just having a trading journal and know, okay, I have to write down what I just did, but really accurately writing down what they are trading and thinking about what they just did and writing down their feelings and really getting into details about um, of the trading after the trade, really analyzing what did go wrong and what do I have to make better next time and everything. So uh, it's most of the time, I mean, let's put it that way. So if 90% of the people lose 90% of their money in 90 days on average, this is the rule of thumb in the broker industry, well, I definitely bet that 90% of the people I'm asking these questions here about the trading journal obviously don't have a trading journal since this is the first step to become better in your trading. Um, and most of the people just don't want to do this. Some of them are lazy, some of them just don't want to know that what they do doesn't work. Um, even though they might see it rather sooner or later if their account uh, grows, doesn't grow but instead um, decreases and decreases even more and then someday goes to zero. Um, 
So make it something positive if you write it down. You have a chance if you if you spot a mistake to make it better next time. And the loss you, you might face is the price you have to pay for the next chance you have. Um, and this is something which will make your trading better at the long run. And um, something, uh, yeah, I, I someone want to, to end this, this webinar with. Um, yeah, that, sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, um, can you help on that? Um, that's that's some some of the the things I, I try to to uh, to tell the people. That's um, so the question is, um, how do you get a trading plan? So we have five minutes left, and usually in my in my uh, online course, um, I'm I'm giving this to the people with all the knowledge I have. They work through this, and then they they work on it. And sometimes it takes people around one year. To, to not just get through all the details here and, and get, grasp all the concepts um, which are important for building a trading strategy, but also to formulate their own business plan, even though the time will come when just everything starts to, to fit together. So there are several questions you have to ask yourself. So for example, what do I want to trade? Which time frame do I want to trade? Which kind of person am I? So some people might wonder, hey, I just write down a trading strategy. That, can't be so difficult, right? I mean, there are so many traders out there. You just have to listen to, to my stuff every morning. Look at what, what I do with the open range in the DAX or ASIA range in the, uh, in, in, in the EURUSD. Listen to the webinars I did with, uh, or I right now still do, with Stefan Frichowski here uh, last Tuesday and then the week before the Tuesday. He was talking about power candles. He was talking about a, um, a statistic a statistical proven um, um, approach which is um, working out really well um, on the DAX when you open the trade at 8 a.m. German time in the morning, so 6 a.m. GMT, um, and, and close it at 8 p.m. GMT every day, and you, you uh, build the position based on the position of the DAX in relation to the uh, um, um, exponential, mo exponential moving average 40. So you have plenty of ideas out there, just can take them and then work with them. But now the problem comes into play. And this is something which many, many people do underestimate. And that's also something why I say um, most of the educational courses out there are just bad. They are just bad. And why? Well, because they, they don't they, they, they don't um, individualize. They, they just they generalize generalize everything. They just think everyone is, is the same. Every people, every human being out there is the same. No, it's not. I mean, every people has his own living standard, his own um, personal rules he lives by. He is he, his own character. Um, 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 he has um, um, a job which, which might fit a, a certain trading style, which another one has to trade a complete different approach since he just can't trade the approach since he's not in front of his desk to, for example, trade the market opening in the DAX every morning or uh, right now, now trading the market opening in the US markets. So it's something really individual if you want. And this is something you have to... Yeah, you have to find for yourself. But this is something which starts to make sense the moment um, you, for example, analyze yourself. So, for example, if I coach someone, what I do is, um, I first of all, I, 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 I let him write down answers to a so-called trading psychological profile. So he really has to tell me, who are you? Or, or I want to know who are you. So first of all, I want to know this to help you better when you have a question, since it doesn't make sense to tell someone, hey, uh, loss of virgin is a topic. And then at the end, I just find out that probably in this special case, loss of virgin is not the main topic, but it's more like um, um, uh, um, the hindsight bias, for example. If you, if you look at cognitive biases here, for example. So it, it doesn't make sense to just say, hey, you are the same as the one, the guy before. And this is one of the reasons why I let my students write down answers to a trading psychological profile. But it's also something, um, it's also something um, 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 where, you, where you say, hey, I have to find out who am I for myself. So just like if you write down, it is exactly what's, what's, what's written here. If you write down who you are, you then start to think about this. Hey, does it make sense? Does it make sense for me, let's say, to trade short-term products, knockout certificates, with a high leverage here, and um, having uh, um, uh, being dependent on a price 
and on a on a on a, on a time scale here, um, while all in all, these are intraday trading products. I don't even know if I would recommend trading these products since most of them are pure speculative gambling stuff things. Um, and uh, probably it makes more sense to trade so-called true products like shares, like FX spot, which have no, um, uh, which have no, um, uh, what's the word for this? Uh, dependence on uh, um, on the price on time since they run all the time. So you you go long, and you go you you can enter the trade and you can close the trade whenever you want. It's not dependent on a time frame. So from from a, from a from from a product perspective, so it is is definitely um, depend on a time frame. If you look at it from your time frame, you're probably my trading. But this is this is something you will answer and you will then grasp. You understand this concept. Um, the moment well when you write it down in such a profile, and, and this is something where you really have to to understand who am I, and these answers uh, to the, 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 the these answers to the questions um, might bring you to the point where then you start to formulate a whole trading strategy and then you see it's not just done in one day saying hey it's a strategy just take it trade it and be be happy and become rich no it's it's more a process it's it's more like um, you really have to understand um, who you are and then formulate a trading approach based on your personal situation and and your personal character and uh, yeah, that's that's um, even though I somehow have the feeling that's probably a little uh, too general, but but um, that's just the way it is. Um, so so it's something very individual. So I'm I'm very I'm not very good at at giving an advice here at this point. So I could easily give you a strategy. I could just give it to you and just trade it. You won't be profitable with this. Look at how, what the turtle traders did. I mean, the approach the turtle traders, Richard Dennis, William Eckert, just worked out there um, was very easy. I mean, it's everyone can grasp this concept. Well, at the end, not all of them. Even though it was just a few who made money, they made really, they made huge amounts of money. Even though it was not everyone. Even though the strategy was really simple, since some didn't correspond with the trading approach itself, had trouble with following the rules and all this. And so that's a perfect example of of uh, that just giving you a strategy which does not fit your personal trading style or where you can't build confidence in since you just do not know what's happening, why it should work, um, why this doesn't make sense in the long run for, for many traders. Um, just um, Antonio, just just sent me an email. Just sent me an email. Um, so um, here you can see it here. It's it's already here. Just just sent me an email, and um, and then just let's uh, let's follow up here. Uh, I think that that definitely makes sense. So um, um, obviously you have some some very interesting questions here. Um, just sent me a mail. Yeah, I look forward to it. And uh, probably here um, that's that's the moment when I just have to say um, thanks. Uh, and uh, I just um, hope you really enjoyed the, the webinar. If you have any questions, as already said, not just Antonio, but everyone, please send me a mail. And um, yeah, just, just, just let me know um, um, if you, if you um, uh, want to, to look into any other things, uh, more detail here in this webinar series. I'm very flexible with this. And um, yeah, so have a nice evening. Happy trading. Watch your stops and then talk to you um, again next week. Uh, I think next time the topic will be live trading of the U.S. market opening. If I if I see this right, yes, yeah, it will be a nice, uh, uh, nice. It will be, it hopefully, will be nice, but it will be a live trading of the U.S. market opening. Let's see whether market conditions uh, deliver something tradable. Let's call it. And yeah, so have a nice evening. Um, thanks uh, for for being my guest today. And uh, then have a nice have a nice evening. Talk to you next week. I look forward to it. See you and. Bye-bye.